Something that I have been researching and searching for for a long time is a good budget-friendly alternative to the SRK because I know a lot of people are looking for it. In this video, I wanna show you what I believe to be an excellent alternative. Stick around. Thanks for dropping in, my friend. I hope you find this video helpful. The knife we're gonna be looking at is the Schrade SCHF3N, and it's no stranger to YouTube. It's been reviewed a lot. What I've been doing is I've been searching far and wide for knives that have the same allure as the SRK, man, such as that black, powerful drop point blade and just the overall look that people are so drawn to. But I wanted to find that blade in a real full tang type design with scales. There were a few other options out there, but they all had over-molded handles, and some of you know my thoughts on over-molded handles. I just did a very controversial series on the SRK about that issue. And here she is. Now tell me that is not a good looking blade. Tell me that is not a monster. Look at the thickness on this thing. Here's the SRK and here are the two blades side by side. You know, this one's a little wider. It's definitely thicker as well, but it's about the same cutting edge. But as you can see, they both look very, very similar. This one's just a little more robust. Now you'll pay about 40 some dollars for the SRK, but you're only gonna pay about late 50s, maybe 60 for this Schrade. But you're gonna get my Carta scales in a full tang construction. It comes with a really nice nylon sheath and you've got a lot of cordage here to attach this to a pack and you've got a place here to carry a sharpening stone. Speaking of sharp, it definitely comes with a good edge. Twelve inches in overall length with a 6.4 inch cutting edge. It's a really great handle here. We've got this choil, these finger grooves, and jimping. This is a HCR13 MOV steel. It's a Chinese steel, which is largely often compared to Aus 8 steel. From time to time, you'll see Spyderco, Kershaw, and Sog using the same steel. If you're wondering why my clothes are different, I actually had to move this review into the next day. I started doing it yesterday, and I ran out of time, so. Here we are with the continuation. I got the blade kind of late yesterday and didn't get a chance to do everything that I needed to do yesterday evening. Something else I want to mention about this sheath is I tend to like these kind of sheaths a lot better than I do the Secure X sheath, partly because I felt like my knife was getting dull. You know, it's the same thing with my Koban Tanto as it was with the SRK. I, I like how, you know, you can lock this in here and carry it with you. This is going to be, you know, one of those bushcraft, you know, heavy duty type of carries, you know, and you've got it locked in this way. And when you're ready to pull it out, it just, you don't dull your blade when you're putting this thing in and out of the sheath like I have before with the Secure X. This is weighing in at 1.38 pounds. So it is a beast of a knife, significantly heavier than the SRK. And you may or may not like that. Nevertheless, it's got some extra thump. Now let's talk about striking a fire. Obviously you've got this nice spine on the SRK for that. Now you do not have a sharp spine here, but this edge right here is sharp for sparking fires. It almost has a cutting edge on it. If you look there, you could actually sharpen that and make it a cutting edge, almost like a double edge, in fact. You can see the kind of spark this throws. Look at that. Throws a serious spark on the back side of the blade there. But the way this is built, look at that edge. This is even a better look there at that other edge. It's not very sharp, but it's kind of sharp. To strike fires with it, you could also put your own edge on it, but it is going to be some serious piercing power. Very, very thick, tough tip. Definitely big and thick enough to chop with. You can hold it right here on the end and get a nice good swing. Nice and clean. It's 
Splits nice and solid. The only bad part about it as a splitter is the spine. It's a decent splitter, not the best I've ever seen. You've got a limited amount of flat spine here and you've got this, this sharp edge. So if you're banging your stick against this sharp part of the blade, you might end up splitting your own batoning wood. Nevertheless, you can get it done, especially with something light. But you know, if you wanna just tap this area, you can, but definitely has a little bit of disadvantage with splitting in my opinion. You may be thinking that this is a little too big to do those up close and personal jobs, but that's what this finger choil is for. It allows you to take a big blade like this and get right on top of what you're doing and just get right down in there, just like this. Just like with the SRK, you start using these things and the black coating is gone. <laughs> this next part is for those who want to be able to get out and throw their knives. Now, if you don't want to throw your knives, that's fine. A lot of us do like to throw because it's fun. You don't have to beat your scales up. Get some hockey tape, wrap the scales, wrap them up, protect those scales. Just give it a nice solid wrap. You know, this hockey tape, it doesn't leave residue. You can just take it right back off that you can get out and at least throw your knife and have a little fun. You don't have to scratch up your micarta handle because these things are beautiful, in my opinion. I just wrap this a couple of times, give the handle a nice secure setup, and then you're able to get out and throw it. Um, and with this one, you can actually throw and you won't break the handle because it's, it's full tame. And even if the handle does get a little agitated, you can usually just tighten it up. But with the SRK, once that handle is loose, it only gets more and more loose. To be fair, I'm gonna throw this one as well. I'm gonna incorporate some misses in there. For these first couple of throws, I'm gonna stand a little bit too close so the knife has a chance to bang against the target and bounce off. Because if I'm gonna be honest in these reviews, I wanna show how it does with misses and connections. Now let's make some connections. I hate to do it, but let's over rotate it and give the handle a slam. No chips from throwing. When you're ready to quit throwing, just take the hockey tape off of it. There you go. Scales look good and intact. Nothing is loose, nothing is out of place. And I purposefully crashed this thing against the target several times just to miss on purpose, just to give this thing a real beating. The scales are fine and you could tighten them up either way if you needed to. Edge is fine, tip is fine, still very sharp. All right, everybody, let's get down to the heart and conclusion of the matter. Number one, I was not sent this blade. I bought this blade to provide my audience with a viable alternative to the SRK because I too have been wanting to know if there are other knives out there that could work as an alternative. Number two, you will rarely hear me point out problems on my channel without providing a solution. I personally believed that there was issues with the SRK handle and the Recon Tonto handle. This problem was something I learned over time. It's nothing you would have seen in my initial reviews. It's just something I learned over time. And I think a lot of people were shocked to hear me put out this newest series on the SRK and Recon handles, but I'm not afraid to be wrong. Friends, there's freedom in being able to admit that you were a little off in the beginning, or maybe there were things you didn't know in the beginning. So I came on here and shared with my audience what my experience has been over time. Sometimes it's easier to just admit that you were wrong and share what you learned instead of being quiet just to protect something you don't believe anymore. So I'm not just on here complaining about the SRK and recon handles. I'm providing to my audience what I believe to be a good alternative. And there are others even outside of this. But what makes this special is the price point. You know, if you buy a new Gerber strong arm right now, which is a great knife, but if you buy one, you'll be lucky to find one for $75 unless you find some crazy steal. You're looking at late fifties for this and look how much knife there is. And it's very similar looking to the SRK. It's just wider 
and it's a different kind of steel. As I mentioned before, it's the Chinese equivalent to the Japanese Aussate steel. You have an actual full tang knife here that you can beat up. You've got good solid scales. You can protect the scales if you want to throw it. And it stayed sharp even after the things that I did today. It stayed paper sharp. If you want something heavy duty out in the woods that won't snap that you can do heavy tasks with, this will take care of you. Lastly, I want to address the issue of the tang because there was some disagreements with regards to what full tang is and what it's not. Uh, yes, the SRK is a continuous piece of steel to some degree. It's just not a very wide piece of steel. It's a very slim piece of steel fitted down into a overmolded handle. Okay, I personally don't consider something like that full tanged. The only time I consider a knife to be full tang when it has an overmolded handle is if the overmolded handle is stacked full of steel. There's plenty of knives that have overmolded handles, but they also have a lot of steel inside that handle, enough width to be considered what I believe to be full tang. The Schrade SCHF3N, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be dropping a link in the description for you to go out and pick up this monster of a blade. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I am officially closing out the series now on my complaint against the SRK handles. I listed the problem, I gave you proof, and I'm providing a solution. Thanks for watching. Take care.